focuses on health, frequency, healing, and consciousness. So she's doing some great work, but we're happy to have you here. Welcome to the show, Kimberly. Oh, thank you so much. I'm delighted. It's it's my pleasure. We're delighted too. So, same. so right before we started recording, you said you were surprised that I reached out to you to talk about this subject because no one's ever asked you to discuss this before. So why is that, do you think? Because I, to me, it's like nothing more important. I think it's locked down, right? We all know it's locked down. David has the final word. Come on, David's the man. He's got it. We all know. Oh, you yeah. Know? David's light. The only app, I swear I have like three of his books that I had to like pay $300 each for. And see, now you guys get it for free. What an amazing service right here. The truth, the untold story. Yes. <laughs> so you're talking about David Politis, Missing 411. And you mentioned in the video that I saw that you, you believe he's a paid informant and he really knows what's going on. Can you elaborate on that, please? Yeah. So um, first of all, I just want to say, you know, I've watched a lot of your guys shows and I really appreciate your approach. And I do want to be clear. I respect everybody's point of view, including your audiences and what they think they know and what they do know and what they want to know. And as well as you guys. So I respect everybody's. Uh, there is a difference, though, as you guys point out all the time between fact and opinion. I don't know how much you guys know about my background or my connections, but my ex fiance still works for Homeland Security. So when you, and I have a lot of ex boyfriends that are, and this is a whole nother show, but I used to think it was coincidence. Like my ex boyfriends are like ex KGB and like high level military and like 13 ruling families of like the United States. But now I don't think it's coincidence. But anyway, long story short, I have all these connections. Some of them I've maintained really good relationships with. And some of them I was together with a long time. And as you guys know, when you have intimate partnerships and you're having pillow talk or you're tired or they're coming home from work, like they tell you things. I don't care what you sign. I don't care what the government threatens you with. But when you love someone, everybody needs a safe you know, place. And so, um, well, I don't know how safe it was considering I'm on your show, but <laughs> long story short, I know a lot about the scripted reality that we live in. And I teach and share that in my classes and on TikTok and, you know, publicly a lot. And, and recently I waited a lot of years. I've been in business a lot of years and I waited a lot of years to come out with a lot of this information because I'm a single mom of four daughters. And um, I was a little paranoid. I didn't want my daughters left. I mean, if you've talked to people in the UFO community, people have disappeared. People have been mysteriously died. I just didn't want to be one of those people. So I waited till my kids were grown. They had partners. They had good jobs. They're, you know, if I disappear, come, come on, let's go. You know, it's all good. So a lot, you know, like I said, David is um, let's just say known in the intelligence communities to get a lot of nice perks for a lot of the things he says and writes. Um, controlled opposition. Let's he's just, controlled opposition. Yeah. And and you know what? What's interesting about that is he's not afraid to go there, meaning that like he covers some of the woo topics, even though it's still a cover story. But there's a reason he's not afraid to go there because he's confident, like he knows a lot of it is true, but obviously they're masking it as well. I can just you can just feel that energy like he's not scared to do what he's doing and he seems to be protected. And that's like another I guess you could say red flag or a sign or just a hint that something more is going on behind the scenes. I think that's a really great point. Um, and I love controlled opposition because sometimes our only truth that we're getting out in this reality is from people like David. So I don't think he's useless or a horrible person um, because there is quite thick strands of truth in a lot of his material. They're really, I also think there's, I, I'm not a big fan, even though by what I do and what you guys do, maybe people would disagree. I'm not a big fan of fear mongering though. I'm a really big fan, even though I'm super woo, I'm probably the most woo guess you'll ever have on here if you, we really talked about my full spectrum of topics. But I like to find the science, you guys. I like to find photographs. I like to find audio recordings. I like to find things that back up what I'm saying, whether it's from me or from a random stranger or from family member, it doesn't matter who it's from. But I really do like, because I think if something is true, whatever that means, and, you know, that could be a whole show, but I think if something's true, there's evidence that exists to prove it somewhere. May not be easy to find, may not be, you know, in every newspaper, magazine, or on the nightly news, but it's there. It's there. You yeah. can somewhat prove it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. 
I agree. And some stuff I think there's intentionally not a paper trail for as well. Like they're really, really dark black programs. But but uh, you'll have other testimonies that link up with, you know, you'll have some kind of evidence because that's still evidence. Right. Right. That's still evidence, even though yeah. there's not what, you know, the nuts and bolts people would consider evidence. It doesn't matter what they consider. It's still evidence. Right. Exactly. Right. So so let's talk about what's going on in these national parks and state parks. What's interesting is I just got back from camping in Chaco Canyon and you specifically were like, I wouldn't recommend camping in the national parks, but uh, it was an interesting experience. But explain to our audience who has no idea what you think is going on and why these are government protected sites, why they're really government protected sites. Right. Um, I first want to kind of come into this subject through I should have looked up her last name, but you guys know I was in a little bit of a hurry to get here. Um, the whole, I mean, I'm just going to give you an example of how they use national parks from a real 3D perspective. So first of all, that whole big murder case a couple of years ago, I think it was during the, you know what, whole thing. They brought out, uh, you know, the thrilling story of this beautiful young lady named Gabby. I don't remember her last name. And it was totally staged, as I'll explain in a minute, in the national parks. It featured national parks very prominently. Um, there were car chases and there were highway patrol confrontations on YouTube. Very badly acted, by the way, not winning any Academy Awards. <laughs> they are, you guys. And, um, you know, there were, there were you know, more tents set up as they brought out body. I mean, this had it all, right? It had love. It had, you know, um, breakups, it had death, it had murder, it had manhunts, it had, I mean, come on, you guys, like, that was, that was a major production, like, they did a good job on that, and um, it was, I didn't even care about it, like, I followed it like everybody else, I thought some of the stuff was a little stilted and weird, and, you know, my spidey senses were going off, but I didn't even, you know, think much about it when it was going on, but a couple months later, I happened to be tapping some of my sources for other information, and they're like, you should know better. I'm like, what do you know what I mean? And they're like, enter. This is so crucial. Not just Homeland. Interagency exercise. Every single one of those people are alive, 100% scripted, 100% staged. And that's mm-hmm. a whole other show and conversation. But interesting, they staged it in the national parks. You know, and again, why? Because when I hear national park or state park, And a lot of people think the same thing. I hear protected area. Now the environmentalists are going to think, oh, the trees and the flowers and little animals. But what I think is protected area, and and it it is for our protection. It's for our protection, as I explained in my TikTok video, and it's for the animals' protection. But when I think animals, I see something different in my mind than most people, the little bears and the foxes and the bunnies. I see dogmen. I see Bunnies wearing clothes, which I'm happy to contribute that picture to your show if you want to show it. Um, I see weird and crazy things that, um, you know, they don't really want you to see. So that's why they have certain hours and that's why they have certain, if you really dig into the larger national parks, there's certain restricted areas. You can't go. You think you can. You're like, well, we own this. We're the people of America and our tax dollars pay for this and we can go anywhere we want and do whatever we want. You can't. Yeah, in very many, even if you research Sedona, Arizona, which is a very popular tourist de- destination for people like us, UFO people and consciousness people uh, and Bigfoot people. I mean, so many stories um, with some evidence I've discovered of encounters with military carrying very heavy artillery, you know, around the areas where people have disappeared. And, um, and all sorts of things. So again, this is a protected area. This is an easily accessed government area. And everybody's like, well, yeah, because they just drive in, you know, the government owns it. But no, it's very easily accessed from the air, obviously. And it's very easily accessed from the bases. So here's another little fantasy fallacy that maybe somebody can help me prove. I haven't been able to prove it. I only have confidential information and informants telling me this. But when you guys are driving down the road, right, you're driving through West Virginia, you're driving through Virginia, you're driving through Arizona, where it doesn't matter, anywhere that has mountains, and you look up on these mountains and you see, let's say, 20 cell towers, you know what I mean? And they're different yep. kinds. They're like radio towers. I'm sorry, I don't have all the correct language, but they're all different towers. You guys know what I'm talking about. And you'll see them. If you travel anywhere for an hour, you're going to start seeing these on hills and in high places. Well, everybody's like, yeah, those are just your cable or your internet or your cell phone towers that they're putting up on these hills because it's logical, right? That's what they tell us. That's what we think. You look up who owns them. 
which is interesting. You might want to try that because it's not always Verizon. It's not always AT&T. It's interesting, some of the people who own them. And then if you research further, they're these um, corporations and they're these groups. And then you research further and it kind of, you know how they do it, traces back to agency, traces back to military. Right. My information, not saying this is true. I'm just going to be really clear. Help, help us, you guys, you know, help us. My information, every single thing, you want to know where the underground bases are? Right there. there and and below the windmills, in my opinion, as well. Um, That's interesting. Uh, I know I know. I was just driving through the, over to the southwest, and we drew through, um, I think, Alamosa, Colorado, that area. And there was like this mountain, and it just had the windmills just on top of it. Nothing around, no power lines going to it or from it. And and then I get to the event and somebody starts talking about a uh, deep underground military base in Alamosa, Cal- Colorado. I'm like, no coincidence. I know how things work now. And so my my intuition was right. Uh, I'm not saying this proves there's a base there, but and I noticed those towers were driving across the country. I point them out all the time. Like, why are they up there? They're, they every it's like they hijack every every sacred place, every mountain, every, you know, whatever it is. Um, Absolutely. But getting back to the national parks and the bases, um, <laughs> I'm a no, it's, it's it's all great. So explain to us what do you think is going on at the national parks? Okay. Well, the other thing I want to bring up, which again, people are like ley lines, no such thing, whatever. But I think I think there's people that study science that would say there's ley lines, even not just the woo woo people. Yeah, um, there are. Again, my knowledge of ley lines is there's two different kinds of ley lines. I mean, there's lots of ley lines, but there's two different types. Again, in when I hear ley line, I think, well, which one? What do I mean by which one? Are they dark held force ley lines or are they light or positive held force ley lines? So again, um, in my opinion, every state and national park is obviously going to be over a, just by the nature of who controls our reality, a dark forest ley line, unless there's been a, now some of the ley lines, this is interesting too, in, um, you guys want to know good places to live where you can kind of escape some of this, um, Maine and Vermont, I have heard that the ley lines are held by light forces. Now, when I say light forces, you guys might be thinking I'm referring to on world light forces. I'm really not. I'm talking about higher than that because, and I don't know how woo I'm allowed to get on the show since is, you guys have sports woo, social fun. Is, I guess I can go wherever is, I want to go. Is, wherever so, you want. As much as you want. Yeah. How I see the controllers of the reality is so we're looking at the humans, but what are the humans? The humans are all double reptilian Draco bloodline. We're talking avatar and usually Draco soul, which is, yeah. we all have different ET souls. Um, and then the next level above that is going to be pure Draco. So I'm talking Draco avatar, Draco soul, or reptilian avatar, reptilian soul. And then above that is my infamous, I hope I don't, they usually start creating problems when I say this because they don't like me saying it, but I'll say it anyway. I call it the Galactic Non-Federation of Light <laughs> runs, runs the whole show here because the Galactic Federation, I'll be, I'll be respectful. The Galactic Federation of Light actually put the mechanics in to create what I call the game, which is what? The Van Allen belt. That's what keeps, that's what keeps us memory wiped. That's what keeps us remembering our psychic abilities. That's what keeps us thinking we're just these little humans and we're all searching for spiritual meaning and we're going after religion and we're going after money and we're going after sex, we're going after power. Because most of us don't know what the heck this is unless we go to religion or why we're here. And so, um, you know, that's kind of the hierarchy right there of who controls this reality. So we, anytime you have the government, I hear Draco. So until I see that the Draco are out of controlling this reality, that's who controls the national parks. That's who controls the state parks. Well, who's associated with the Draco? The military industrial complex, on world and off world. Date, and then there, we can go drill down. You guys have talked to enough people to understand this. Then there's daytime black ops. And then there's totally no record of anything black ops in relation to our military, every country's militaries. And then we go into the secret space and all these other entities. So it's complicated, but to me, it's very simple who controls the reality. So the military industrial complex on world and off world supports the agenda of who? The top dogs. You guys want to pray to someone, talk to someone, you want to get something done, make friends with members that are power players in the Galactic Federation, because that that's who can blow the whistle on a you know scripted event, or that's who can make something good happen. I don't very, know if I answered your question, or if I, I went off. I mean, 
Well, first. you know, it's all it's all it's a good like prerequisite to have and understand before we actually cover the national parks and stuff. I mean, because I agree with with what you're saying as far as the hierarchy goes and and really non-human entities, you know, controlling the show here. And as far as the national park goes, like obviously that's government controlled area. They own that land and they own it because a lot of, in my opinion, their bases exist underneath there, their ley line areas, like you said. Um, and there's also the portal aspect. And uh, mm. I, I guess I'll let you take it over sure. there and explain. I'd that. like to, I love that you brought up portals because again, there's a number, in my opinion, um, different portals. So there's the actual, maybe they're ancient portals, um, maybe they're military created portals, uh, they're, they're jump portals that they use, uh, you know, to get in and out of the bases, maybe to go off planet. Although, um, and I've said this a million times, so it's not going to shock anyone who's watched me before, but this is, this is the world we live in that we're just, that it's so saturated alongside the dumbed down version. Every single Marriott hotel, you guys, Every single Hilton hotel has a jump room. Does that not blow your mind? I it, we're, no. I've heard that the Hilton <laughs> have jump rooms. Sorry, I don't know how that goes. No, you guys are no fun. And, <laughs> and I'll tell you the other thing under all, every single Marriott and Hilton hotel. And I'm, and I'm not saying there's not other hotels. So, I mean, because some people are probably going to write and say, oh, and this one, this one. I'm not saying it's the only one. But I know for sure those, the underground high speed tram runs under all of those too. So, you're having so much going on and you're sleeping happily in your little luxury hotel room, you know? But I've been in one of those hotels that scared me because I bring those door jams and I put it on the doors. And I'm not saying, of course, if somebody non-physical wants to come in, they're going to come in another way through through the wall, however they want, you know, technology. But if a human agency, whoever, uh, you know, someone who wishes me harm wants to come in, they're going to go through the door, right? I've been in so many of those hotels and I usually travel with my dog uh, and they people don't like me staying at the hotels because it creates a big hubbub when my door alarm goes off and everybody comes running everybody's freaking out and that and they always put me in those adjoining rooms so there's so much going on in this reality so again portals where are a lot of the portals where are a lot of the jump rooms they're in the national parks and there's those created kinds but there's also the kind like in my woods and it's funny the best stuff i've ever seen you guys i don't have my camera because I'm living my life. So when a big giant 70 foot door appears in my woods, I'm sorry, I'm out in my nightgown, taking out my dogs before bed. I'm not like out with my camera, like, you know, which maybe I should be. So there's that kind of portal that may be dependent on the moon, maybe dependent on the sun, maybe dependent on rain or who knows the third of third week in March on the weekend every year. Like we don't know everything. And I, and I'm the first to say, by the way, I don't know everything either, guys. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, yes, yeah, certain alignments. Like, That's what I, think there's a, I think there's like a natural portal system that they open up. The gateways open at certain times in specific alignments. And then there's the government man-made portals, which uh, Jessica Jones, if you're familiar with her, she remotes view, oh, remotes, that. she remote views a lot of the national parks and portals. They, they even documented two of their men going into a portal and coming back out. They disappear on the infrared and they come back nice. out. Um, and, uh, it's very interesting, but, uh, I forget where I was going with it. Oh, she, when she remote views, she sees government made man-made portals as well. Um, uh, so I guess explain like, so when people go missing in these national parks, that's where you think they're going. Oh, it's just one of the, I mean, one of the places I think they're going is I think sometimes they're stumbling on these holographic where it looks like it's rock and they're like, oh, go lean over against this rock and take a picture. And you're like falling through, you know, and you're hitting the first line of either tech or guards. And a lot of times, sometimes they'll memory wipe you. I have a picture from um, right up against the state park. Like, I mean, feet away from a state park, which I basically still consider state park for all intents and purposes. I have a picture of an alien holding a probe on property that I decided not to buy because I took a picture of a rabbit which I wish I would have talked to him. I didn't see it until I reviewed the video later. Have you guys, do you guys ever do that? Like take video and then you find like the best stuff that you're like, damn, if I'd seen this and I was right there, I would have like talked to this thing, you know? Because yeah. I figure oh, if yeah. a rabbit's wearing clothes and standing upright, it can probably talk. I'm just guessing. So I took that picture there. I pulled it off video and out the same video, I pulled off um, this alien with two Sasquatch holding a probe. 
And I'm like, you know what? This is too close to the parks, too close to the bases because on the mountain behind my property are those towers. And I'm like, I'm just not playing here. I'm making it too easy for them to get me by on this property, you know? So again, I think there's a lot of those portal entrances that people stumble into. And depending on them here, here again, we're so generic. If somebody's not like us, if somebody's not human, if somebody's not American, if somebody's not a man, if somebody's not a woman, we think they think like us. So we think they're going to act like us. So when we don't know something, we put everybody in a big group. So we think all reptilians are the same. All Dracos are the same. All Illuminati or Cabal are the same. I mean, but that's the populace, you know. So what I'm saying is we could have a hundred different situations that could play out a hundred different ways. Somebody could be memory wiped and sent back home happily and nothing happens to them. They don't disappear. Somebody could be tortured and then memory wiped. Somebody could be implanted and turned into an MK Ultra, you know, trigger slave and, and then memory wipe. Somebody could be like, we're too lazy. We don't feel like we just feel like eating them for God's sake. I'm being facetious, but you know, and we're going to disappear them. Like it depends on who, who owns that base? What's their mood? Are they in a good mood? Are they in a bad mood? Do they have the tech there? Do they want to mess with you? What did their superiors say? What's the protocol? And it's just so different. I know people, I know so many people like living, you know, that were pulled out of, um, like Lockheed Martin, almost every single engineer in, okay, this is so important, in the daytime has been pulled out of Lockheed Martin and taken to underground bases and held against, when I say against their will, I don't mean like chained to a wall. I mean, taken from their families where they had to scramble and find people to take care of their children. How do I know? Because last summer I was called to take care of somebody's children when they were pulled. And then they keep pulling them. That's fun. It's it's kind of like, have you? well, you guys are men. <laughs> I used to date detectives. And I don't know, a lot of people don't know that cops and detectives and everybody, they can do whatever they want usually on their shift. But when they get a call, they're pulled. Like, they're like, see ya, you're stuck with the bill, you know, whatever, goodbye. I'm like, okay, it's the same thing. So again, this is an open source game. Like we are all taken. We are all messed with. We are all programmed. Again, it's the levels and the layers and what you're used for. And just because you're taken does not mean you're a super soldier. Um, you know, I started another business, which I'm not going to go into. Um, we can talk about it another time. But I have never wanted to step into the super soldier thing because I just haven't wanted to. Like, it's such a mess. Like, I want to bring transparency and light and truth to the super soldier community because I'm sick. I mean, that that whole thing needs cleaned up, you guys. I'm sorry. Like, that oh, is know. just off the range. I yeah. mean, the stories oh, yeah. and the BS. And some of the craziest stuff is the true stuff. And some of the stupid stuff is the untrue stuff. But can we just like, and, and I don't blame the people. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone because you have false memories. You have false memories. And I have false memories right here sitting here talking to each other. We right. have stuff that happened in our childhood that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. That we were somewhere else or something else. And it's not just us. In, and again, we can get into the whole sold, unsold thing. It's not just people with a soul. They use clones. By the way, we all have clones. We have many clones. Oh, yeah. And again, I, you know, I have family that works in the cloning industry. I know we're getting off topic and I'm sorry, you guys can cut this if you want. But um, no, no, no. You know, I'm just like ah, all over the place. But back to the, you know, back to the park. So they're going there. They're going into these you know, different types of portals. I also believe, have you guys ever seen the stuff about those weird stairs that appear in weird doorways? Like I was talking about in my woods that appear and people disappear going upstairs. They just like disappear into look upstairs. It's fascinating. Oh my God. It's creepy and fascinating. Look up on YouTube, like stairs in the woods. Just type that. It is like creepy so people come across like these stairways that go to nowhere and they have all these weird experiences and some of them disappear so again i think it's our lack of understanding of okay and so let's say we do understand where we are let's say we understand this is a game we understand the technology we understand who runs it if we don't understand what's outside the game we're still lost you know why because this is an open source game you guys and you guys probably know this so not only can people from within the game and who run the game interfere any ET race that wants, positive, negative, neutral, bored, motivated, not. I mean, they literally reach their hands and then they move trees. They move towns. They disappear buildings. Half the trees in Central Park aren't even real. They're holographic projections. Like, I am just, I'm sorry, guys. I'm passionate about this because we're at a 4.2 level. We're not at 3G anymore. We're heading toward five. We got to wake up. And I think people are waking up and it's beautiful, but they're not waking up fast enough for me. I just yeah. want everyone 
person, you know, I want everyone to be happy and safe, you know, and I think stumbling around hot property, um, out Ash, I used to live in Asheville and I have personal experience of really scary situations. Um, Chimney Rock, very popular tourist yeah. destination in Asheville, North Carolina, highly militarized, creepy as all get out. Like you don't even have to have intuition. You could be almost dead and you wouldn't want to walk certain places around Chimney Rock. Like, why is there massive military around Chimney Rock? Like, it's crazy. And and people yeah. are like, and it can be proven and there's pictures and you can go on, you guys can go on and Google that and you're going to pull pictures. And I love how everybody assumes, and I understand why they do, that everything's doctored. Like, I would be happy to give you guys my, you know, like people see this rabbit wearing clothes and they're like, you dressed a rabbit in, but if you guys saw it, like, and I'm like, why, if you guys knew my life, I do not have time to dress rabbits and stage <laughs> pictures, you guys. Right. And so, you know, I'm all about, you know, I'd be willing to give you guys my phone for all my, I have thousands of pictures of creatures and beings, you guys, I have dogmen, I have security camera footage where in the daytime, a dogman has appeared in my property in the daytime and set off my security alarm on, I mean, I don't have time to stage this. I have little people dressed in battle gear that stood out my house. It was so beautiful for three days when I moved in here and talked to me and said, you look out for us, we'll look out for you. And people accuse me of dressing up GI Joe dolls. Like I don't have time. I live 30, 40, 50 minutes from stores. I don't have time to go to toy stores and buy GI Joes and put them out in the rain and stand out there and photograph them. And how am I photographing them anyway? It's off my security camera. Like how, I don't even know how to do that. I'm not that good at that stuff, you guys. But anyway, what I'm saying is there's proof of how our reality works and how things outside of our reality work. And I just feel sometimes I'm, that's why I usually don't come on shows and talk about this stuff because my kids don't like the hate I get. And I'm sure you guys get your share of hate. You're used to it. Oh yeah. But oh, yeah. I'm about proof, you guys. Like I'm about come to my house camp for three days and see what you get you know i mean all right send me your address <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't tempt me um oh, you're funny. so i i'm assuming you live on some sort of portal or ley line intersection area if, if that's if you're I having... live, um, basically i live i mean to me when you're 100 feet from a park line you're living in a park i basically live in hanging rock state park okay so you mentioned in that video I watched about one of the reasons also is the government understands that all of these creatures exist that aren't supposed to exist. The dogmen, the Sasquatch, the little people, the giants, the inner earth yeah, beings, uh -huh. elementals, the mm -hmm. fae, you name it. And they're trying to minimize our contact with them. And that's another reason they don't want us in those park areas after dark. Can you explain or elaborate on that a well, little bit? Here's and here's my theory on the, we'll do the why and we'll go back backwards. The why is what if you know all the fairy tales are true? Mind blowing, like that completely changes your reality. I've got a better one for you, and you guys probably already know this one. But what if all the Marvel comic book movies are true? Yeah, I've thought about what that. If, what if you are the heroes in the Marvel comic book? What if you are Spider Man, Spider Woman, Wonder Woman, Transformers? Because again, um, you know, I've been around a long time. I've had a lot of clients, I have a lot of famous clients and a lot of celebrity clients. And some of my clients draw for Marvel. He passed a cancer, but one of the guys who drew Spider-Man um, was one of my clients and he's since passed a long time ago. But um, I was helping him with his health at his house, actually. And he showed me his drawings. Of course, you would, if you're proud of that, you draw for Marvel. And at the time, it meant nothing. I wasn't even into this stuff, you guys. But guess what was stamped all over? property of the military. I'm not going to say which branch, but all really? over his notes and his files for drawing. Why? Because I can, and I can tell you because of the technology I use and who I am, but so many people, I'm talking about you and I, um, one of my daughters has a lot, are augmented with arachnid DNA. What's that sound like? Hello? Spider-Man. Who offends them? The military. You know, they come and take us. What do you think they do? I mean, a lot of the, you know, what they do, I can tell by how people are testing on scans. I can tell you exactly what they're doing to you because I'm seeing it come up. You know, a lot of people have likened DNA, you know, werewolf, you know, everybody's like, oh, you know, so, you know, guys, when the werewolf movies, when I'm 
older than you guys, but back in the day, the werewolf movies were really popular, like Teen Wolf and all that. Mm -hmm. And the guys would be like, oh, I wish I was a werewolf. Half of you are, including women. And so what we get is we get some of the characteristics of those creatures and then they activate them. Uh, and again, when they take us the night, not just consciousness transfer, but a lot of you guys are being taken bodily at night. And, you know, they're like, how can I tell? Well, start paying attention. Look at your arm. Do you have needle marks? Do you have bruises? You know, do you have pinpricks? Like, do you feel drugged? Guess what? You know what I've done? I'm about proving. This is why I think I'm different than a lot of your guests. You know what I did when I felt drugged? I said, I'm done with this. I'm going to get a urine test. I'm going to test my urine every morning when I get up for 10 days. You know what I found? Molly. You know, I found heroin. You know what I found? Cocaine. What do they use a lot of those for? They use it. Wow. To, it's for your benefit. It's not all for your detriment. I'm a time traveler. I go through a lot of jump gates. You have to be drugged or you'll die. And they'll have to go through a lot of clones and replace a lot of bodies. So you just, I just had a little aha moment here. So when I was younger, I was 19 years old in construction. I was a goody goody in high school. I hadn't touched a drug, alcohol, nothing up until that point in my life. I just wasn't that person. And I, they random drug test me and tested positive for cocaine. And it made no sense yeah. to me. It made really? no sense to me. And, uh, I mean, maybe something like that happened. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Oh, you guys are being, yeah, you guys are being like taken all the time. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well I, I, I know. <laughs> I know I, know I am. One time I had, uh, I woke up drugged and sick like that. And I knew I was somewhere. It was like the memory was right in the tip of my tongue, but I uh -oh. couldn't, and I couldn't remember, but I had two different, I got so sick and I kept getting worse throughout the day. And I saw two different people and both people said I had what would equate to, uh, radiation poisoning. And really, yeah, two different people both said i had all the symptoms like radiation but it didn't make sense that i would have radiation poisoning you know right unless i was taken but e either way like yeah i understand this stuff happens and like you said actually the the quote you ended your video with was this is nothing whatsoever that you've been programmed to think meaning this reality and right. i had someone today um i posted something about chemtrails or whatever and right. it was a com it was a comment some guy made admitting he's like i'm i'm happy to be a part of the whatever long story short saw that uh, yeah. the person was like uh the comment was oh he was probably just joking and i said that's the mentality that got us in this mess in the first place they mm -hmm. they expect they rely on us all to see this stuff and go oh he's just joking oh that's just a joke oh that's not real you know right and even though they're showing you right in front of your face that it's real People are programmed to say, oh, he's just joking. So it's There's like so much right in front of our face. It's it's ridiculous. But Absolutely. The, like just said, the programming of people is so strong. They will see it and not see it at the same time and not believe it. You can then like you just said, you show them a video, you show them pictures. Even if it's real, they're going to just assume it's fake because it's so far outside of their paradigm and belief system. It has to be fake, just like uh, just like mainstream archaeologists do with mm. real artifacts oh it must be fake even though it's been tested and proven to be real oh it can't be real it must be fake done you know done i always say you guys long. that um like i drove up last night i took a picture and i can send it to you if you want me to and the sasquatch come up to the edge of my woods and they greet me because they mm -hmm. live there. they're my they're my sasquatch if you could own sasquatch so they come up and i took a picture i got the cutest little baby picture but even if i carried that baby probably up to you guys you'd be like oh that's a monkey or that's or that's a kid in a costume like i swear i could have a dog man on one side i mean a real one you guys and a sasquatch on the other and a naysayer would say it's cognitive dissonance they're we met right. we try to force what we our senses tell us to match our preconceived and this is what they want us to do because they're the ones programming us right. and i didn't finish what you were asked you know why they care about these creatures and stuff well a lot of people's abilities are coming online because we're 4.2 d right now heading toward 5d 5d is already there the technology is breaking down the technology is what puts the 3d illusion up uh, and blocks us from a lot of our stuff 
And people are starting to see these creatures and see these beings. And, and again, we all know there's a kind of a battle for kind of who's going to run the game, you know, going forward and how it's going to be run. You know, we have the Alliance in queue and we all know all that and all the, you know, desperate measures they've been you know, bringing in. But I mean, I, again, I think they bring the David Pilates out. They're like, okay, well, we'll give you a little bit about the parks. Like we'll give you that there's some fishy stuff going on and, you know, it could be this, it could be that. But we're not going to bring you somebody like me who sees these beings like 24 seven, because for whatever reason, because of who I am throughout time and space, my abilities are way above, you know, I see way through the dimensions. Um, I can merge with any being, you know, I have these weird psycho abilities, you know, remote viewing, like you said, but, but more than that, it's experiential. If you guys, again, were on my property and experienced what I do on a daily basis, you would be believers too, because that's my experience. But right. they put us in cities, they put us in sterile, which is funny because the Sasquatch are there too, but they put us these places and they tell us nothing exists there other than a ghost or two. And, and we are so sterile. And then we go out these parks and we see weird things um, and they're still conditioning us not to believe what we see. And so then, and here's another movement that needs cleaned up, you guys, uh, the Bigfoot dogman movement needs cleaned up too, because you're never, ever, 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 ever going to find what you're looking for on the back of a four-wheeler in your camouflage, sorry guys, with your right. guns, because right. you don't understand what's outside the game. You don't even understand where you are. What's outside the game is dimensions with beans, and everybody's like, oh, I want to be 5G, I want to be 5G, I want to be 5G, and you know, teach me, Dr. Kim, how to be 5G and how to act my, my abilities. I say no. They say why? I said, because you can't handle 5G. What's in 5D? 5D is every monster movie you guys have ever seen and worse. And they're actually here right now, but that bleed through because we're in 4.2. That's why this is popular now. That's why Zach Bagans got rich and famous. Not because Zach Bagans is so amazing, which my ex-fiance grew up with him, so I can tell you all sorts of stories about him. Oh, really? But, but um, it's not because those shows came on at the right time. It's because the time was right for the shows. Because the frequency level of the game had increased to where enough people were seeing it that were looking for answers. And so it was a match. It was the right time. People's abilities are coming online. And we're moving, we're above 4.0. So I don't know if you guys have abilities. I don't know enough about you. But I think pretty much everyone um, is, is going to start having abilities. My abilities have really upgraded to a point where I'm about to back them down. Because even I'm seeing some stuff I don't want to see. So. I agree. And that's interesting. You say yeah. the show is released at the time when the frequency is right. It's a frequency match. So they can they can start, you know, the collective consciousness has reached like the hundredth monkey effect. And now we can. Well, why do you, why do you think right. all these governments are coming out about UFOs and ETs all of a sudden, even though for decades and decades they've been they've been yeah, claiming great. they don't exist, ridiculing and lying and, uh, you know, trying to say, oh, not, no, that doesn't exist. Nothing to see here. Move along. And now all of a sudden they're saying, oh, they do exist. We know they exist. Hey, guys, get all excited right. about it. Why do you think they're doing that now? Right. And they even hint at other dimensions and stuff. Oh, like yeah. That. True. Right. True. Um, so going back to the parks, because I, I really want to, you know, go deep here. He's the best crawler I've ever had on a show. He's like Literally oh, and figuratively, I want to go deep here. Uh, so okay. you mentioned also cave systems and inner earth entrances in these parks as well and those are being protected as well can you elaborate on that please again, um again the government has a vested interest in keeping you small and what can i smell and what can i touch and how many netflix series can i watch at once and how much beer can i drink how much sex um, can i have and how much money, money can i make can I spend? yeah yeah you know, how many cars can I accumulate, you know, chasing right. all these and it's Even fine. And I, yeah. And no <laughs> judgment. It's fine. It's a game. Do what you right. want. If you want to do that, fine. But what the government doesn't want is the, which there's no such thing as human is the fire creation beings to wake up because honestly, if one of us really was and I mean in being, I don't mean thinking I'm powerful, I'm powerful, I'm powerful, enchanting things or writing things or doing vision boards or any of that, not that it's all BS. I mean, being it, one of us came fully online, we would be 5D tomorrow. We would be running the game. Mm -hmm. And 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 again, and again, 5D, I also want to clarify something. 
5D is really low compared to the all you guys. We don't, I don't know how many Ds there are because there's really no such thing. It's just a level we give to kind of say what's going on around that level. There's really no such thing as dimension because all the dimensions fit on the head of a pin. Everything's happening here. We have access to all the dimensions all the way back to the all. We are the all. So some of this, it's hard. It's like this weird dichotomy that we always have to clarify what we're talking about. Are we talking about the big picture? Are we talking about the little picture? So there's nothing wrong. I mean, the whole point of this game is that duality where we have, or do you want to play a light character? Do you want to play a dark character? So it's not wrong if you guys want to play the, you know, greedy, hedonistic character. But so inner earth, who's in inner earth? There's a lot of what we would call star races or ETs in inner earth. There's yeah. amazing beings like the dragons. There's a huge dragon community. And in Earth, again, what if dragons exist? Wait, so fairy tales exist? Superheroes exist? You know, like, wait, magic exists? Wait, power? Abilities? Like, I can create things in a split second with my mind? Like, we can undo evil? We can stop abuse? Like, no, that's not the Draco. That's not what the Galactic Federation wants for this game. It's against agenda. So... It's kind of like if a hacker got into any popular game, and I don't know what the popular games are right now, but any popular video game, you know, I know Call of Duty is not popular, but I'll use it as an example. So, you know, we're playing Call of Duty. We get it. We get the rules. We get the characters. We get how to win. But it's like, you know, we're the hackers. It's like if we went in and we're like, you know, we're going to change, you know, Call of Duty into like, you know, Dancing Little Ponies and Princesses. Like, that's the threat we are to this game. So mm -hmm. because right now this game, there's many hell realms. Hell is not just one place, but this game is a hell realm nightmare level game by design. And here's another dropping it in your field, twisted thought. Some of you wouldn't want it any different. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, they People don't want change. I, I know exactly what you mean by that. Uh, people are afraid of the truth because it means they have to, you know, let go of everything that they've attached their identity to. So um, but you think that some of these entrances, whether inner earth is a dimensional frequency place, or if it's a physical place, you think the entrances reside in the national parks primarily? I'm sure there's more. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the major easy surface entrances, um, I would even go as far as to say non tacky entrances. We don't have to have a certain kind of tech. Um, on you, in you, or access to it. Um, I think they're protecting the natural. You kind of referred to it before, like the ancient gates, the ancient um, commonly used. I mean, I think it's Navajo, I'm pretty sure. I mean, things are happening right now in 3D that would blow people's mind. Like um, I know the Navajo, I believe it's Navajo. I don't think I'm misspeaking though. I'll get a call if I am. But I think it's not all Navajo. Some of the Navajo really high level elders, uh, the shaman, um, they have monthly, at least monthly meetings with giants in the 3D flesh, you guys. I'm not talking about imaginary. I'm not talking about smoke giants. I'm talking about the giants come in and they converse, you know, and they're coming in from other dimensions. And also, again, we have to understand what happens outside of here. Beans outside of here, and we could do it here too if we believed we could. Because the number one rule of this reality is what? 100% of what you believe is real. So if you guys believe tonight, I mean, really believe that you could walk through a wall, you go home and say, hey, kids, look at me, you know, and walk through the wall. If you believe you can, but you don't, you can say you do, but it's so programmed. You know, we don't, right. even I don't. I mean, I've had some weird things happen, but even. I don't. So again, um, you know, this inner earth is real. It has dimensional gateways, has dimensional aspects to it. And there are some really nasty beings um, that like to torture you, play with you, sometimes kill you, sometimes clone you. Um, and then again, there's some amazing, ancient, powerful beings. And it's mainly, it's not, you know, maybe it's protection both ways, protecting some of these races and these species. Um, but it's more about they don't want you to know. The whole point of a game is you have to have like a, you know, something come against you to win the game. We're trying to win the game. It's their job for us not to win the game. So, and again, some of you guys have to realize and look at this from a higher perspective. Your oversoul chose, you were bored. You guys are trillions of years old. Zillions, trillions, there's no number for eternal beings. Who knows what wave you came out of the all. 
you wanted to forget. You wanted to fight your way back to remembering. You wanted to forget there were dragons. You wanted to forget that you had psychic abilities. You wanted to forget that there's spaceships. I mean, I'm telling you guys, there's so much stuff you could do to prove stuff to yourself. Go out one night somewhere where there isn't light pollution. I bet in one day and ask the ships, say, could one of you do a thrust for me? What do I mean? All the stars you guys think are stars. There's not really, it's a whole nother conversation. There's not really stars, but we don't talk about that right now. But ask one of the stars to do a light thrust. They're ships. And if you've got connections, (laughs) they will right in front of you. You will see, and it helps to have higher vision, but you can still see, you will see them take off in warp speed, like Star Trek, like Star Wars. Yeah, And they're like, wait, you can ask that? These are individual human beings with personalities. They might say no, they might not do it, but they might. They might be in a good mood again. You know, they might have had a good dinner. Um, you know, they might be a soul family. So mm-hmm. to me, there's just so many layers and levels of thinking that does tie in with the subject that needs to change. And you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe these guys. You don't have to believe anyone. Start pushing the boundaries of your experience and experience for yourself. I you know I love all the thought provoking stuff, and I agree. Push the boundaries. Uh, that's why I get so bored. Like by movies, like every movie plot is the same. I'm like, come on, like, like yeah. make yeah. my brain work here. Like, give me something. That's why I liked the latest Matrix movie that everyone hated because it really like makes you wrap your mind around reality, and it's like more true than not, and people don't understand it, but. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Kimberly McGeorge, NDCNH. Please like and subscribe so I can continue to take the time to release and make available clearly content that I've already done. I want to be releasing new content as well. And some of my content will be behind a low paywall, including some very, very raw uh, opinions and exposés that I just don't want out, you know, for free for everybody. But, um, Thank you very much. Uh, SecretEverything.com. Get a scan. Our um, astral class, Advanced Navigating the Astral Class, will start in about two weeks. Uh, It's filling up fast and closing soon. So please go to my YouTube and watch the video on that. I'm going to make it public um, so that people can join from there. So part two will continue in about a week or so when I can get it together and get it done. But thanks so much. Take care.